Welcome to a very special edition of Razorback Reels. Today we're exploring past the traditional mediums of TV and film and delving into the new and upcoming platforms of YouTube, Vine, and podcasts. While some people say Vine is dead, we completely disagree and totally disregard that statement. So here are a few of our favorites. Let's start with Emma's. Tell us a little bit why you enjoy the six second segment so much. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Clarissa. But um, so my Vine choice was two bros chilling in a hot tub five feet apart because they are not gay. <laughs> and I enjoy this one so much just because it's so funny because clearly these two guys just don't know each other at all. But you can kind of think like into the scenario and you can kind of like realize that if they were actually buddies, that's so something that they would do because they wouldn't want like other people to look and realize, oh my gosh, like they're gay for each other. So that's why I enjoy this one so much. It always makes me laugh every time I watch it. No, I think that's so funny too. Like one, just because like they're doing it and two, because of the person narrating it. Like, you know, they could have just said like, <laughs> oh, look how far apart these guys are. Like not said anything at all and just like captioned it that like he made a song about it you know this this song is brilliant like let's be honest that little beat that he's got going there is is pretty good it's pretty good okay let's take a look at it and see what everyone else thinks two bros chilling in the hot tub five feet apart because they're not gay (laughs) so yeah that (laughs) they're really short so you don't really know when they're gonna end um but yeah, six I think seconds. that one's really fun. There's six seconds, and it's crazy, like, how funny these can be with well, only six seconds. That's what makes it seconds. so entertaining, too, because, yeah. like, we're, we live in a society where it's so fast-paced that we need to constantly be here, 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 and it's, like, six seconds of just pure genius and humor, and then it's like, okay, yeah. it's over. Oh, all right, good, awesome. I can it really shows, off. like, who's funny and who's not, because, like, mm-hmm. you have six seconds to be mm-hmm. funny. Right, like, can you do it yeah, or can you, can you not? Are you funny or are you not? It's yeah, like, my yeah. vines are not funny. My vines are not funny. I see, okay, I try to do vines, too, and and like I don't think that any of them were any sort of funny. Like I thought it was hilarious, and the next day, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to delete this immediately. Like this is so embarrassing. <laughs> now I need to search for your. Vi- I need to see if we can find her. Uh, no, my God, absolutely no. not. Is, um, we need Vine 2.0 for it's sure. 2.0 for sure. 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some other funny vines that aren't mine because I know they don't <laughs> exist. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, Ashley. And you have. Um, uh, a nice girl that's also singing a little song, right? Yeah, she's this, you know, cute little, you know, young teenage girl, and she's singing about a country boy. Oh, and then okay. at, at the end, exactly she goes, wow. <laughs> no, it's so funny, okay? And the reason why I love it, okay, first of all, it's kind of like she's speaking to all the females out there that are like, you know, I, I tried, especially like my first semester here, I was like, I'm going to look so good for all the guys oh on campus. God. Like, <laughs> I'm going to do my hair every day. I'm going to, you know, like, give them a little, you know, a little look. Yeah. And I was like, this girl is like preaching. She's like, hey, listen up, guys. Like, I want myself a country boy. And, I, and she's, she's not afraid. She's not, she's she's not afraid she's little, to tell him. She's a little, she's a little weird, but you know what? And I, I have she's to confident. say, I no, confident. She, no, that is a she definite, is, when Demi Lovato sang that song about being confident, oh, yeah. then she I think that's confident. what inspired this. And it's so, it is so funny. And like, honestly, she's kind of my spirit animal in a way. And like, you know, I'm very much a city girl and I think the opposites <laughs> attract. So I think I need to find <laughs> myself a nice <laughs> country boy. boy. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. Take a look at it and see what we're talking about. Country boy, I love you. Oh, that's the best country boy. And the thing about that is that it just it goes it zooms in at Eli when she does the face. Like it's one thing for her to just like do it, but like they really want you to know what's going on with the mouth and the like the noises she's making. Oh my goodness, mm-hmm. she slays it. She really does. Like if I could be half. The girl this is. I, I would just. I hope she gets her country boy. Mi- I hope she gets I, her country. I hope <laughs> I get my country boy. Like, I wonder forget about her. Where she saw that she was like, I want one. Yeah. Like, right. Who did she see? Like right. Brian? Like who was it? Was it Maybe or was it like an old cowboy? Yeah, like George Strait. I mean, who Ooh. was it? Was it like? We need to one? know. I mean, we'll like reach out to her and maybe yeah. like she'll respond or something. <laughs> we'll DM her. Okay, so over there, Rachel, tell me what your favorite vine is. Okay, for sure, it's. Nora, did you pee your pants? Well, yeah, sometimes. And she's just like, <laughs> so cute. She's like this little, like, toddler well, I who's to coloring. Why. She's picking her nose. She has zero oh, care in the world. And she's like, well, duh, I pee my pants. Like, who doesn't? She's just so matter-of-fact yeah, about she's it. She's just like, well, 
yeah, like, don't you? And so like, I just think it is so <laughs> funny. And it's, like, so <laughs> candid as well. Like, it's not like, a lot of vines are scripted. Uh-huh. This for sure is not scripted. And that's it's just love. hilarious. Yeah, that's what I love about these little kid vines is that, like, you know, you have six seconds to be funny, but they don't even know that. Like, they, they have no the idea. Things, they uh, really do. So <laughs> let's, okay, let's see what Nora said. <laughs> hey, Nora, do you pee your pants? What? Do you pee your pants? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> what I love about that is, like, the eyebrow, she's like, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Like, oh, whatever. like, like yeah. why are you even asking me? Like, obviously. You know I do. Like, Right, like, uh. don't even ask me about that. No, like, kids are so pure, and I think that's why I really like Gavin Vines. Oh, my gosh, I love Gavin. <sighs> Who does it? True. True. This is, okay, so Gavin, he is this adorable little, like, redhead. He's, like, got reddish-brown red hair, hair, something like that, and he is just so pure. He's so funny. He blew up so much that we now call him the Internet son. You know, they say, like, Gavin is our son. Chrissy Teigen is our Twitter mom. I don't know about Chrissy Teigen, but definitely Gavin. That's it. something I can get behind. One of my favorite ones of Gavin is he's like um, his, I think it's his uncle, Nick Mastodon. That's like the guy is that does uncle, all the vines. Yeah. It's his uncle. It's not his dad. It's not his dad. Yeah, so the guy that does all the vines, his name is Nick Mastodon, and he's holding this um, like lizard, and then Gavin like puts his finger in it and it bites him, and he goes, <laughs> Hey, Gavin, did he bite you? He goes, no. <laughs> and it's, like, so obvious that like, he just did it. But that's just, he's like, not a snitch. No, he's not a snitch. Like, that's his homie. Like, okay, yeah. see what we're talking about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> did he bite you? No. No. Oh. <laughs> it's so weird. He's like, no. And his innocent little reaction to when he's like, oh my goodness. But right, no, he like he like, reacted to it. He was like, oh yeah, like that definitely hurt. He like, totally played it off. Yeah, all. you see like the calmness in his eyes. He's like, no, I'm not snitching. Like, was he this trying to be tough friend. or what was it? Or was he just He was like, protecting his friend. He I didn't want to lose he, his friend. He didn't want to lose lizard privileges. True. I feel That's like, a good point. Well, and the best thing about Gavin, too, is that he went beyond Vine. He basically became a meme. Uh, Gavin became a meme yes. on Twitter. That's how you know. What's your favorite Gavin meme? Favorite Gavin meme? I'm trying to think of one. Does he have like a tea or something? Where he's like holding a coffee mug and he's like, Oh, yes. yes. (laughs) It's like the the Kermit, you know, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. But then now it's Gavin like, Mm. It's like when you know a juicy piece of gossip and they're not telling you about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Gavin is just so incredible. I think we have another Gavin Vine. Take a look at it. If you want, or not. <laughs> I will put it on Twitter. No big deal. Um, okay, Hunter, tell us about your favorite vine. Okay, well, I have two favorite vines. One of them is, it's this guy, like, singing. I don't know if he's at a club or where he's at. Like, maybe he's in his room. But mm-hmm. he has kind of, like, these strobe lights in the back. It looks, like he's at a, it looks like he's at a party. And he, like, it's the song Pompeii, I think. You know, like, oh, when yeah. you close, <laughs> close your eyes. And he's just, like... But when you close your... And he just, like, closes, closes his eyes, and it's just, like... There's, like, an inside joke in college that I have that I can't say right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. We just got to watch it. Let's take a look. <laughs> And that's another thing, like, it's so pure. Like It's so relatable, though, I think. Well, it's so simple. It's like, yes. you close your eyes, okay. I think that's what <laughs> like, mine is about, like... Not overdoing it because you have six seconds. So being simple but being hilarious. And I think that line is Right, just like do everything for a purpose. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay, so I remember the other Gavin Vine that I was talking about that we don't have, but it's so funny. Which one is it? Okay, tell us. Okay, it's literally one of my favorites. I think I laugh about it every day. Like I don't think that a day goes by that I don't think about Gavin. So he's like, he's holding this, um, it's like a frog or like a bug or like something in this like clear case. And it comes and it jumps on the side. <laughs> and like jumps on the side of the case and he goes, Whoa, you scared me. <laughs> and like I wish I've been working on that impersonation for yeah, like can a you while. Do it one more time, just one like, more time. Well, I just wish you guys could see it though, because oh, it's so too. funny, but he's like, You scared me. Like just the way and I'm like, Gavin, where did you get that voice? Like, where did that come from? Like he's so small and he's so funny. Kid's gonna do voiceovers one day. Honestly you. though, he's yeah. gonna be That's really famous. Job. That's wait, Hunter. You have another favorite okay, vine yes. too, right? Okay, this vine is kind of like from Harry Potter. Uh-huh. And so it's like him and Ron in the flying car and they're driving. Yes. And then like total plot twist at the end. 
That's all I'm going to say. Let's just watch it and then you'll see Okay, why. let's see that. <laughs> Comes up, and it's, like, it's like so random. What the heck? Like that's so funny to me. Hey, you know what, Vines? As you can tell, we're all crazy about them because they are crazy and they are random. But what's got really people going crazy right now is a new trailer for The Incredible Sue. So take a look, tell us what you think. I'll be right back to talk about the new forms of media that are taking over. Did you wash your hands with soap? Did you dry them? What? Is this all vegetables? Who wanted all vegetables? I did. So, are we going to talk about it? Why? The elephant in the room. What elephant? Mom's new job. It's time to make some wrong things right. We bring supers back into the sunlight. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes. And Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> Whoa! I like Mom's new job! Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. That's not the way you're supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. This I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Mm. Math is math. Okay. Hello? Hey, honey. How are the kids? Everything's great. Is she having adolescence? And Jack Jack? He's in excellent health. No! What the? Num num cooking. Oh, no! Cooking. Whoa! Okay. That is freaky. You know what's crazy, right? To help my family, I gotta leave it. To fix the law, I gotta break it. You've got to, so our kids can have that choice. Thank you, young man. Combustion imminent? What does that mean? Ah! It means fire, Robert. The screen slater interrupts this program for an important announcement. Suit up. It might get weird. I'll be there ASAP. Where you going ASAP? You better be back ASAP. Welcome back to Razorback Reels. If you find yourself wanting a break from silence or music you hear while walking to class, why not try a podcast? Podcasts are audio-only media that cover a wide range of topics and interests, but there are two major types of podcasts. There's fiction and there's nonfiction. If your interests lie in cool facts or people talking to each other about life and anything they find funny, you might want to try nonfiction podcasting, where the topic of the week genre is very popular. Perhaps the most famous nonfiction podcasters include the McElroy brothers and their show, My Brother, My Brother and Me, in which they answer listener questions in a comedic fashion. Chances are, though, one of your favorite celebrities has made something worth listening to, as there are a wide range of nonfiction podcasts to choose from. On the other hand, we have what is referred to as audio drama podcasting. These shows are like TV shows you just listen to. Now, there are so many good audio dramas out there, and you might be hearing about some of them soon, as a few of my favorites have gotten in talks about being on TV. But these aren't too widely known, so we thought it'd be fun to have a little guessing game with these uh, titles. So, I guess, uh, can you pass at guessing the podcast on live broadcast without looking aghast the game? That's the closest I'll get to to rapping ever. So, <laughs> all right, so the first one we've got is called Wooden Overcoats. What do you guys think it's about? Obviously, okay. it's about an overcoat that's that is made, made of, of wood. wood. Okay, I think that's pretty it's, obvious. you have one overcoat that's made of wood. The whole society is made of wood. They only wear wood things. But it says wood coats. pants, wood shoes, wooden overcoats. What if overcoats. it's more like symbolic? 
symbolic mm -hmm. of like the Something, I see, okay. okay so what I'm saying is like you know how like uh, it, in Pinocchio when he's like I'm a real boy or whatever you know and whatever he says I think that's exactly <laughs> well, I think that's I baffle myself I just blow myself out of the water okay <laughs> anyway no I, I'm, I'm thinking that it's like this um, sort of take on the society where it's like mm -hmm. very uh, the society mm -hmm. is very stoic mm -hmm. like there's this overcoat of mm -hmm. just like uh, right. s of of intensity and and yeah and hostility and I think that's really like philosophical and it's super deep but I still <laughs> think and it's an entire well, town made of wood well, maybe it can be mm -hmm. I don't I, I don't like, really see it being anything kind of like Lincoln yet. Logs but yeah. in All real right. life well you're uh, not really close I um, saw that coming so <laughs> wooden overcoats is actually about a uh, about rival funeral home directors on a small island. Um, so the wooden overcoats are, of course, coffins. Oh, see, the oh. traffic would have helped. So twins Rudyard and Antigone Fun have a funeral home on the island of Piffling Vale for a very long time. When Eric Chapman, a charismatic and charming new funeral director, moves in across the street from them and does it a little better. This is a very comedic show, contrary to the dark-seeming theme, and will leave you in a better mood than you started, for sure. That was my next guess. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next one is called Wolf 359. Okay, Hunter, so, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is what is this one about? Wolf 359. I don't know. Maybe there's, like, a pack of wolves, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. There's probably multiple people, like, talking maybe about, I don't know, certain, certain topics politically. Or so it's like a, like a wolf uh, group? Maybe, yes. Are I there 359 say, wolves? Actually, 359 is something. the degrees at which wolves burn at. <laughs> I think that you completely made those. that up. I don't. I don't know wolf. that that's. I don't believe that. That's wolf not accurate. Wolves burn at 359 degrees, and so this and is about. And you are the wolf expert. Is yes. this true? This is about society wolves. where wolves are banned, and the way you ban wolves is like Fahrenheit 316. <laughs> Four well, yeah. Four fifty, yeah, not quite. Um, so, Wolf Three Fifty Nine, Wolf Three Fifty Nine is about the crew of a space station orbiting around a red dwarf star called Wolf Three Fifty Nine, and about what they get up to on there. The crew is made up of Commander Minkowski, the navigations expert and the person in charge, Dr. Hilbert, the medical officer, Hira, the AI who runs the station, and Officer Eiffel, the communications officer tasked with looking for alien life. It starts out very comedic but finds its funding as a sci-fi sci plot very quickly. This is honestly my favorite podcast and the one I would recommend the most. All right, uh, next we have Welcome to Night Vale. If you've heard of a podcast, you've probably heard of this one. Oh, you look so confident. Okay, I feel like it's about some creepy little town okay. that, pe that these people live in, and mm -hmm. I don't really know, like what, in, like, what the people are doing there, but I just, I feel like there's, like, a creepy vibe around Night Vale. Like, right, whatever nighttime. they're doing, it's the it's, wrong thing. And it's thing. through, like, the night. Yeah, cause, like, yeah night, it has to occur at night. Yeah. The veil, there's, like, a veil the veil over yeah. the town. Something like Maybe spooky. it's an invisible town, <gasps> and nobody oh, yeah. can see it because there's a veil over it, and it's mm -hmm. always nighttime inside of it, so it's dark. I would listen to that. We should make a podcast. Well, actually, actually dead. you're pretty, you're pretty <laughs> darn close there. So Welcome to Night Vale is a radio-style show that uh, sounds as if you are listening to a community radio from a strange town. Uh, its narrator-slash-community radio show host, Cecil, tells you about the slightly weird happenings of the town of Night Vale. Mm. It is by far one of the most popular audio dramas, so you've probably heard of this one if you've heard of one. So you guys were very, very close. Okay. All right. Next one. Next one is The Bright Sessions. Okay. Ooh. This one, I think it's about Jeff Sessions, but only, like, <laughs> happy Jeff Sessions. Like, he just always has a smile on his face. It's talking about just, like, all the great things that he's doing. He's skipping around the White House. Like, he's just really enjoying his time. Hmm. Obviously, it's about hmm. light. Hmm. Like, because it's... Why, yeah. are you, why are you laughing at me? I'm serious. Like, it's about well, light because it says... The bright. bright. Sessions. Yeah. So it's, like, maybe, like, sessions that take place in... Bright and then, like, or yeah. maybe it could be about bright people, like people oh, who are yes, really smart. Oh, yes, like inventors yeah. or something. Oh, yes. and like, I, and no, no, no. no. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. definitely you're about super, the, You're super right. <laughs> no, it's definitely about the, maybe it's, okay, maybe it's about inventors that are in bright settings. Mm -hmm. Who can only invent in the light. Ooh. And in the dark, they're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to say no. Um, the Bright Sessions is actually about a therapist named Dr. Bright, 
who provides therapy for people with superhuman abilities. These people called atypicals have powers such as being able to feel other people's emotions and being able to hear others' thoughts. The series also follows the group's fight against the Atypical Monitors, or the AM, a shady organization keeping atypicals away from and secret to the rest of the world. So uh, that's all the time we have for our uh, podcast game here. Um, and podcasts are definitely my favorite medium to listen to at all times. But uh, I hear that we have someone who disagrees and thinks that YouTube is better. So, uh, Rachel, will you tell us about that? Well, I mean, obviously, YouTube is way better. Like, you can see what's going on. Like, come on. Um, <laughs> But tonight, we are debuting the first ever segment of What Happened to That YouTuber. Um, to, I'll be talk, and tonight, I'll be talking about the only teenager who pretended to be a six-year-old boy with an extremely high-pitched voice and anger management issues. That's right, Fred. It's hard to believe, but it's been over a decade since Lucas Cruikshank created the character Fred Figglehorn and became the first YouTuber, YouTube celebrity. He debuted his first video in 2006, and over the next few years would become the most subscribed YouTube channel at the time. With his most popular video, Fred Goes Swimming, getting over 71 million views. His internet fame led him to guest star on TV shows iCarly and Hannah Montana, and eventually landed him a deal with Nickelodeon, where they helped him produce Fred the Movie 1, 2, and 3. Unfortunately for him, the films were wildly unpopular, and the first film got a shocking 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Soon after his ratings started to go downhill, it was clear that as Fred's fans grew older, so did his, so did his videos. And in 2012, the last Fred video was posted to YouTube. Since then, Cruikshank um, scored the lead role in the Nickelodeon show Marvin Marvin, but due to its low ratings, the show only um, lasted one season. Even though his television career was not that successful, his YouTube career is still going strong. He started a new channel called Lucas in 2013 that has been more than 1.8 million subscribers. His most recent videos have shown him reacting to his old videos, testing traditionally feminine products like tampons and bras, and making many, many boyfriend tag videos. Speaking of YouTubers, our very own Kaylin Jackson will be here um, talking about her YouTube channel right after the break. We have the discovery of a lifetime. We've all believed the Mariana Trench was the deepest place on Earth. But we encountered the completely new world. System go for descent. We should find all sorts of species. Completely unknown to science. Oh my god. It's Megalodon. He's kidding, right? Megalodons were thought to have been extinct. They're not getting eaten by some prehistoric fish. You sure about this? Not really. If you want me to go instead, I will. I got this, man. Okay, good. So is lying. Welcome back to Razorback Reels. To keep the YouTube conversation going, I thought I would tell you a little bit about myself and my channel. I started my channel in the eighth grade and have been making videos ever since. I like to film sit down, chit chat, get ready with me's where I can blab for hours about the latest episode of The Bachelor or recent celebrity breakup shockers while I'm doing my makeup. I also enjoy filming vlogs with my friends where I can just take the camera around with me for a day and capture fun moments that we're doing. 
When I first started my channel, it was more of a creative outlet for me. I didn't really have a main focus of what I really wanted to do. My videos were more beauty related with me doing makeup tutorials and beauty hauls. And today my interests have changed a little. My videos are more geared towards my everyday life and the things I enjoy doing like shopping, carpool karaoke with friends, travel diaries, advice videos. And at the beginning I was making videos off what my favorite beauty gurus were doing at the moment like Mac Barbie 07 and Makeup by Mandy 24 who are now known as Bethany Moda and Amanda Seale and are huge influencers today that got their start on YouTube. I didn't know what was going to come of my channel. I just knew I liked being in front of a camera and getting to speak about what was ever on my mind. I love that YouTube is a platform where any creator can upload their content and get instant feedback from viewers. I also love that it's a diverse community and there's no limit to who and who can't post. If you'd like to support my channel, I'd love that. You can check me out on YouTube at my name, Kaylin Jackson. Can you guys believe we've had a YouTube star in our midst this entire time? It's and we crazy. didn't know until last right. week. Right? I literally can't wait. She's going to be one of my favorite YouTubers. Speaking so of, let's talk about some of our favorite videos on the tube. Starting with the old people trying to say buttery, flaky crust. Have you guys seen this one? Oh my gosh. This one's so funny. They just struggle with it so hard. And it's, it's an old couple. It's like a couple, right? That does it? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yeah. their relationship, was it defined? I'm not sure. Well, maybe they're just friends. It's maybe, like maybe, maybe. The but way that like, they're portrayed, it looks like they're the epitome of like a of a couple who's been married for at for least like 45 long years and they're just so comfortable that they bicker with each other yep. the way that they do. <laughs> but I don't know. Who knows? It could have been staged and it's just really, really good acting. Oh my God. You know, I, <laughs> I just think the adorable. problem, I think the problem is, is that they're having trouble acting. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I think that's like the premise of the video, but let's check it out and, and see what you guys think. The line is baked in a buttery flaky crust. Baked on a buttery fl crust. It's close. Buttery. Oh. buttery flavored crust. Baked in a buttery flavored crust. Uh, crust. Yeah. Baked in a buttery flaky crust. Baked in a buttery flaky, flaky, flaky crust. Here we go. Here we go. Baked in a buttery crispy crust. Flaky. I like flaky all again. Ha! <laughs> sure they have that coupon up there. Baked in a buttery. Okay. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things about this video is her face. Like, obviously, <laughs> yes. he's messing up. It's really funny just to see the things that come out of his mouth because they're so diverse. <laughs> There's so many different things coming out of his mouth. But the thing that doesn't change is her face. You know, she's always kind of like, ah. And then as soon as he says it, she's like, <laughs> this to me is like no. like Saturday Night Live quality. Like this looks so, sounds like something they would make up. Like, but it's so <laughs> but it's real. real. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the next one. One of my other favorite ones is Brad Pitt eating. Have you guys have you seen Brad Pitt eat? This was the first time that I saw it today uh, earlier today, and I was a little confused. But like the concept is funny enough that it's just pretty hilarious. What do you guys think over there on the other side of the table? I'm actually really excited to see this video because I haven't seen it yet. I have not seen this video, but watching the Oceans movies, Oceans 11, 12, and 13, he's always eating in those movies. Yes. It's something that I've always noticed. <laughs> well, you guys are in for a treat. Let's take a look at footage of him eating like what do you guys think what are well, your i mean who eats that aggressively like he's just like chomping he's down so on the exactly. bite like makes me what, why are you doing like that like off camera like if he does it just like solely for his character if he actually eats like that in real life he just imagine like how many bites he had to take for that Hunter, what do you think i don't know i mean usually actors aren't like portrayed eating on camera so i guess he was just unique enough to to get to eat. Maybe he was just like really like hungry. Game. Like they never let him eat because of his <laughs> diet. Can you pay just hungry. Well, that's all the time we have for Raised Back Reels tonight. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Raised Back Reels and have a really great night.